Well, good evening and welcome to another session as we discuss the Bible together and uh, talk about the things of God. Uh, this week um, is a topic that's really uh, precious to my heart, uh, obviously being a church leader and a pastor, which is, which is that of being connected to a local body and finding a place to serve. Um, I think a lot of people believe that they can go it alone and live their Christian life, uh, just do what they want to do. If they don't want to go to church for months on end, that's fine. Um, if they find solitude and seek God for themselves, that's okay. But that's really not what the Bible teaches. So Maggie and myself are going to talk a little bit about being connected. The Bible uses uh, some wonderful pictures about these, uh, the body of Christ. Firstly, about being a body, which is a very, very interesting picture, about being a building and also about being a bride. But there's a real importance, isn't there, Maggie, of being connected uh, to a group of believers to, to find a place to serve and also a, a place to, to grow. Absolutely, Steve. Yeah, um, I think. I mean, I, I we've we've talked. You know, there's those pictures that you've mentioned about the body, and there's some other lovely pictures. I also think that even you know, straight off as well, church is meant to be like a like family to us, a place where we we talked about last week a bit, where we, as you say, where we grow up, and if a family, a physical family, is healthy. Um, a child will grow up to be healthy, to grow up in every aspect that's necessary. And God intended that, you know, this is a God-given thing, the church, isn't it? It's, it's a bit of a no-brainer, really, that the whole of the New Testament speaks from, you know, Jesus and Paul, who are the, the biggest protagonists, but they're speaking and demonstrating all the time, a together thing. It's not, he doesn't send people off. Jesus doesn't send people off on their own. Paul doesn't send people off on their own. He sends people to belong and they are shepherding. Both of them are caring for people together. And I think one of the pictures for me, it doesn't use this word so much, but I think there is family there where I am growing up mm -hmm. to be a healthy believer uh, in the same way that I grow up in my family to be healthy. And if I don't have family, we're seeing that now, that so much brokenness of families means that people don't grow up to be healthy um, in every sense. And if I don't grow up in, a, in the church family, mm. a healthy church family, then the, the relationships, the knowing and the being known and the being accountable and watching good modelling, all that kind of thing that you get in a good church family, I can be lacking and I can grow up to be very off key mm. and to be missing a lot of stuff that God intended for me. Yeah. Often people use the word, don't they? Dysfunctional family. And if you're not truly part of the body, it's quite dysfunctional. You're not connected into the, the roots that you need. I mean, Jesus said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. But then there again, is another wonderful kind of picture of us growing together to produce fruit. We're not on our own. We're connected into Christ as the head. And then we're his body and uh, we're supposed to encourage each other. One of the things uh, I've seen over the years is when people tend to pull away from church, um, they're, they're like a, a little sheep that goes astray, aren't they? And you know what? That's when the enemy is prowling around to try and pick people off. We, we've both seen that, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. And um, I mean, I've seen that quite a bit with, with our guys, Steve, you know, where they get to a certain place and they've been used to being loose cannons in their previous lives. And they've used to been living quite independently. And they might have become part of God's family for a while and the church for a while. And then they think they're, they're quite strong and they can just go it alone, you know. Mm. And I had a phone call from a, a colleague this morning out in Hong Kong telling me of one of our guys who was doing brilliantly when he was with us and not just come off drugs, but grown tremendously in Jesus. And now he's gone back to his home area and he's not so much part of, of anything. And he's all over the place. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's multiplied lots and lots of times over. That's not, 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 nothing to do with whether you're a drug addict or not. It's that when we're on our own, Paul talks quite often about you know, we are prey to, sometimes he talks about ravenous wolves or 
but he says, you know, you are, you will get picked off. It is that picture of the sheep and mm. the shepherd, and the sheep need to be with the flock, and they need to be with a shepherd. Mm. And, and when when we're together and going in a direction, and we're getting fed properly, uh, we can be strong and healthy. But when I'm on my own, doing my own thing, and I haven't got a, a strong reference point, um, then I can be very vulnerable to all kinds of thinking, all kinds of messages, and um, and I get I get spiritually weak and I get emotionally weak and and I am vulnerable to all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah. and as, as believers, we need accountability. Just like in a family, we're accountable to those that love us and we love. Very much the same in the church situation where we need to be accountable. And, and some people don't like that. They feel like they they know all the answers. They can live it their way. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Mm. You know, God's big on authority, always has been. And he talks about the pastors and, and the Ephesians 4 giftings as being under shepherds. And I take my job very seriously, you know, that I'm looking after stewarding people's souls, you know. And my job here is to not only build you up in, so you can get on with the work of the ministry, but make sure that you're not going off down a cliffside to, you know, your own destruction. And there are many people just just don't see that. And then say, oh, well, the pastor's told me this and I don't agree with it. Well. You know, if, if we're doing our jobs right as leaders, we're not there to, to stop you growing. We're there to aid you to grow. And I think that's really important. Absolutely, yeah. I, I love that bit in, um, I think it's Acts, towards the end of Acts, I think it's somewhere about chapter 20, where Paul talks to the leaders of the Ephesian church, and, and he clearly loves uh, the church at Ephesus. And, and he talks to the leaders. It's his kind of final, you know, his parting speech because he knows he's going to die. And it's a very moving thing. And, and he talks to them as leaders and says, guys, remember what God's charged you with. You know, that you are looking after the flock mm. of God. You're looking after the church of God. And Jesus gave his life for that church. They're precious. Mm. So do your job properly, guys. So it's it's a two way thing, isn't it, Steve? That as as leaders, as those that God has given the privilege of as to be leaders, we have a great responsibility. And but we can only as as we do that, as we do what what uh, Paul's encouraging those leaders to do. There is we love the people as Jesus loved them and laid down His life for them. Then great things can happen. And we, 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 I, w I would say if you don't belong to a church at the moment or you're looking for a, a church family to belong to, you look for a place where people will love you, but not in that kind of, we're not talking soppy love. Mm -hmm. The accountability that you're talking about, Steve, is part of that love, is asking the hard questions is concerned about where somebody's life is going because you want the best. It's that agape love, isn't it? You know, that, that wants the best for that person, wants God's best for that person. And, and will go out on a limb to, to help that person and keep them on that track mm. so that they have exactly what God wanted for them. Mm. And, and that's, that's healthy both ways. Definitely. This is a bit of a political, well, but it was a church hot potato, not a political hot potato, but a hot potato in the church. A lot of churches function around democracy. So church actually becomes a bit like a club. So we've our set of rules and everybody has a vote. So your opinion is counts just as much as the pastor's or even though he's probably been walking for God for 40 years and, and spends mm -hmm. time praying. But you, you, you've only been a believer now four weeks and you've got the same kind of voting rights as, as the man who leads the church or the woman who leads the church. That, that's ridiculous. And, and what, what the scripture teaches me, as far as I can see, is that we are part of a theocracy, which is God government. But then yes. God chooses his under shepherds to, to look after the flock. And if, if we have like a club mentality, then when, when things don't suit us, we'll walk away. It, what, what we need is, a, as you say, a family mentality where sometimes we know we're going to disagree. But once we've disagreed, we, we put it back together again and, and carry on working and loving each other. Yeah, and we've talked before, haven't we, quite a bit about spiritual authority. 
Mm. And, you know, Jesus gave authority to his followers, didn't he, that we're going to become leaders. Those, those 12 disciples were going to become leaders. And he said to them, all of authority is given me by the father and 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 i give he sends them out with authority mm. with permission to do certain things and to take the lead and they um together with a few others like paul who was a later apostle they they were responsible for the conversion then of much of the roman empire as as they knew it then and so they had they had authority and they had responsibility and there is there is in the the church now it's not a hierarchy in terms of this person's better than that person but god there is a god-given authority that god puts uh onto his leaders and mm. his shepherds his, his pastors to take responsibility for the flock of god and he talks about submission in the new testament paul talks about submitting to your leaders and not making their job difficult because he says they are the ones that love you for God and they're the ones that will help to keep you in the truth and they will help to protect you from stuff that's going on around and they will be the ones that help to mature you mm. in God. So it's it's all meant for good. It's all meant for our good. And it's, it's, it's a lovely, um, you know, when I was growing up, Steve, I didn't like sometimes being told by my dad certain things, you know. Sometimes mm. he didn't want me to go out at night or he wanted me to be in at a certain time. Sometimes he'd sit me down and, and wasn't very happy about the friends that I was mixing with uh, or the boyfriend that I was getting involved with, you know. And, and it was uncomfortable sometimes, but it, he did it because he loved me. And he wanted the best. And I can think of times when I was very much protected from things that would not have been helpful um, because my family, they didn't control, but they spoke truth to me. And, and they did that because they loved me. And, they, and then there should be that. And um, Jesus and Paul both talk about those kind of things, um, those sort of boundaries that are good and help us to grow. Yeah, definitely. Church also be as well a place to serve, you know, a place for family and love, but a <laughs> place to serve. Um, my big concern, and has been for a while, is that church in many spheres right now is very much entertainment based. So we go to church because we like the preacher. We go to church because the music is our kind of music. Mm. All of those things are not legitimate reasons to be planted in a local fellowship. And, what I'm, I'm trying to reason out with some of our folks at the moment is you'll never try find a church where everybody agrees with your doctrine. You'll never find a church where everybody agrees on the way that we worship. But what we do is find a unity and purpose of, of serving God together in the Great Commission and the bringing in the other harvest. So yeah. if you're out there today and you're searching for a church and you're wondering, you know, will I ever find a church that believes what I believe or likes the music I like? The answer to that is probably no. And if you turn up at it, you'll probably spoil it anyway. But just find a place where you can honestly feel that the people around about you love you and it will encourage you to serve yeah. the Lord. And all of us have been commissioned to go and preach the gospel. So obviously yeah. our first and biggest priority is not that you feel uh, particularly comfortable, but actually you feel energised in the mission to which God has called us all to. Yes, yeah. Um, you, you mentioned earlier on... Steve, about one of the pictures in scripture being of, of, of a body, that the church is like a body, that we're meant mm. to be part of a body. And and I think and I think some of this is is indicative of the age that we are um we are now in we're a generation that does love to be entertained and we are and we're quite consumerist in our approach to lots of things, aren't we? You know, we I I people love to go. Shopping is a pastime for lots of people. It's a leisure thing now. Um, and so to buy things and to be entertained and to be quite passive uh, and to sit in front of a big screen for long periods of time or in front of uh, games and things for young people and to sort of be entertained in that kind of way is a big thing. And I, th I think we have to be very careful in the church that we we don't encourage our people to become to come like that 
to mm. be entertained or to come to get something for themselves. And that picture of the body, um, of course, is a very dynamic one, isn't it? Because the body is meant to move and be active and dynamic. And so Paul is talking very much there that we, we are all called to have a part in that. Mm. And, um, you know, if I'm a body part, there ain't much I can do on my own, is there? If I'm a leg or an eye or whatever, I can't just kick around on my own and get very far. But once I become part of, of another bit um, mm. of the body and, and I am prepared to really be active and serve, and, and that's when I will come to life. Mm -hmm. That's when I'll start growing up as well. And, and again, it can be uncomfortable, but it's for our good not to be passive. It's for our good and it's healthy to want to be part of that body and be active yeah. and see life come and see God do stuff through us together. Um, and that's a really healthy thing to be involved in, in church. Mm. What, what I believe is this, that there's lots of people maybe that don't go to church, that should be in church. And what you're doing by stopping at home is you're not only robbing yourself of a blessing by being part of a corporate body, but actually you're robbing the body because there's people like yes. me and Maggie and other people that are having to try and do the work of three or four body parts instead of concentrating mm -hmm. on our core gifting. Everybody came in and played their part. What a beautiful symphony that would be, you know. When you think about, you know, the body working together, you know, if you if you were to lose an arm, for for example, in an accident, then your other arm and the rest of your your body have to compensate for that loss of the arm. And I just think sometimes yes. the church is so dysfunctional and disabled because we're missing key people. One of the things we're doing at the moment, Maggie, especially from from our leadership team, is beseeching as jesus told us the lord of the harvest to bring in the laborers because we're definitely missing key mm. people yeah. and and we need the whole body to to reap the harvest in yes absolutely yeah yeah and you know i think we can fall down on, on in two ways here we can think we've got nothing to give or we're not sure what our giftings are we we're waiting for somebody to tell us their giftings when actually there's there's always something that we can do, whether it's moving chairs, answering the telephone, visiting Mrs. So-and-so down the road, taking the food parcel out. There's stuff to do. And the early church, you know, they, they just got on with the business often of distributing food in the community and doing, doing lots of really basic stuff that was very God stuff. So, you know, don't wait till some big ministry comes your way to do that get stuck in and and find out what there is to be done and do it um but also as as as, as we operate together and and we're willing to sort of uh, um, be open to, to serving in that kind of way another lovely thing that happens is that people see our giftings and are able to call out those things and that we are able to operate and developing certain things that God's mm -hmm. given us and to function beautifully in those ways. And, and like you're saying, Steve, that then that, ha that happens as we do that together with other people and there's a lovely harmony. And, and once the body gets moving together, you know, it's a beautiful thing to experience. Um, and you see God at work and, and that is so life bringing. So, you know, whether you feel you're super gifted and you haven't had a chance yet, or whether you're not sure if you are gifted or not, or you don't feel you are, don't wait. Just offer yourself, ask what there is to be done, and start there. Yeah, get plugged into a local church and uh, become fruitful. That's what we're asking. We need people mm. to be fruitful. And, um, you know, the more we're faithful towards doing what God's asking us to do, and, and most of us know what our calling is or what our key giftings are, as we operate in them, I've always found that faithfulness always leads to increased opportunity, you know, while you're standing alone and you say, well, God's called me to this and that, and, and you just keep doing so much talking rather than doing, then you really don't grow at all. Yeah. Uh, our growth comes when we get stuck in, get connected, as you say, work with other people. And there comes that kind of confidence then and, and a development of our, our gifts that perhaps we'd never, ever have if we just stood all on our own. Um, and I know one or two people will, will be saying to me now, well, I walked away from church because I was hurt. Well, that was then, and ladies and gentlemen, this is now. And if this pandemic's taught us anything, is that 
we need people and we need to be more united in, in terms of church than we have been before. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you see, sometimes I hurt. I think, um, yeah, we, th there comes a time, doesn't there, where we have to do something about our hurt. And, and again, God gives us good guidance about that. But the first thing we need to do is take it to him. Because um, when we hold on to things like that, we're always going to get stuck, aren't we? And um, so we, we, we need to be prepared to, to deal with those things and not, for, not just forget about them, but actually let God deal with them and heal us um, mm. and be prepared to move on and believe that God's, God's given us a good thing in the church. The church is his good gift to us and, um, and we need it. Uh, if we're going to thrive. Yeah, I, I, it made me laugh. Somebody told me once said the, the church is a bit like the ark. Um, with all them animals on the inside, it was really smelly and not so clean sometimes, but actually it was better than the alternative. <laughs> <Which> is, <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and I guess that would be true. You know, where, where, there's, where there's life, there's always uh, problems and difficulties. So, you know, yeah. we, need, we need to grow up a little bit. I know some of you may have been feeling dreadfully hurt by church and let down. Well, you know, that's not an excuse for not serving Jesus, you know, so go and find a place because, you know, God, God's building his church afresh and you need to be connected to the body because we're blessed by association, you know. The more that we connect ourselves to something that's growing and vital and real, the more we'll become those things as well. Yes. You know, I, I was thinking, I was chatting to somebody this morning about um, something that we, we, we is in... Um, First John, the first letter of John, chapter one. And, you know, you were talking about accountability, Steve, and staying in the light, walking in the light. And, you know, when, when we're on our own, it's easy sometimes to drift and to get into darkness a little bit and get into a muddle. But um, you, I think what you get in, in one John, uh, chapter one, is, is a picture almost of a wheel of the church being like a wheel. And I think, you know, you've got you've got the hub in the middle, which I think is Jesus. And then you've got all these spokes going in different directions, but all meeting in the middle. And John says, you know, walk in the light. And as you stay focused and pointed towards Jesus and you stay close to him individually, you get closer to the other spokes. And, and so that your fellowship is healthy and he says, stay in the light. And as you're prepared to stay in the light with Jesus and allow the fellowship of other people and the relationships that you've gotten and, and being known. Because to me, part of, part of the healthy thing, of course, about church as well, is that you're allowing yourself to be known and, and you are knowing other people. And it's only as I allow myself to be known and open that I can be really protected from the enemy because people will know me and, and hopefully, if they see there's anything that isn't in the light, mm. they will talk to me about it and they will, uh, they will help to keep me safe. Mm. Um, and so I think that then the wheel, of course, is, is the most dynamic thing. That's the first thing we had in, you know, that was the first bit of an industrial society. And, um, and it's about motion. It's about dynamic stuff. It's about being on the move. And I, I think that's another picture, a helpful picture, um, of what it's like to be part of, of God's church um, and, to, you know, to be a spoke that's in the right place, focused on Jesus, but allowing relationships around me mm. um, that keep me in that right place and keep me in the light. Mm. Some people really struggle with authority, I know, but let, let me just say this. I don't know whether I said this last week to you, Maggie, or is it to some of the guys, because I've just... I do two two recordings on one afternoon, one with you and one with the, with the guys, the boxers and the footballers. So I do forget sometimes what I've said to who. But I, last week I definitely said to somebody, you know, uh, Jesus Christ is the, the word says he's the cornerstone. So in him we find yes. our strength and direction. You know, he's like the mm. you know my wife loves jigsaw puzzles, you know, but she starts with the corner piece first, and everything else mm. is kind of um, you know taken away from the corner piece. Mm. And there you go again. We're really, yeah, the phone's ringing again. Somebody will get it in the moment, you know, it probably won't. 
Boom. There we go. So, uh, so not only is that easy, the Bible talks about us being built on the um, foundation of the apostles and prophets. Um, and the way I view uh, my ministry is not that I'm a leader shouting direction from the top, but I'm actually a, a stone underneath connected to the chief cornerstone that helps hold people up. Um, and, and that's where I think people get the wrong idea of authority from, that, you know, we're here to shout direction from our megaphone, you must do this and you must do that. But actually, I want to lift people on my shoulders and say, look, you can go higher than I've been. There's there's more on in God than this. And, and you know, and, uh, and to push people people up rather than push people down um, but that's just a, my way of looking at spiritual authority really that it's an undergirding it's a holding up rather than a top down kind of you know you must do absolutely i i think um what people mean then is control mm. isn't it and um you know uh, if you look at, at scripture if you look at jesus he's, he's not talking about control at all um, he is talking about that, that support and that, um, again, I think it's, you know, he, he uses so much and Paul uses so much, the picture of a shepherd leading sheep, mm. that there's a lovely, there's a gentleness and a tenderness um, about the way he's leading us and shaping us. And uh, it's, not, it's not anything to do with control. Mm. That's absolutely right. I and it's another preacher's story, I know, whether it's true or not. Somebody somebody told me that we went to, off to Israel and that he saw somebody um, driving driving the sheep. And um, the, he said to the tour guide, he said, I thought the shepherds led the sheep. He goes, the shepherds do lead the sheep, that's the, that's the butcher. You know, and I think there, there in lies the, the, the difference, really, um, that we're not there to drive people. I've learned, in, in, especially during the lockdown, I, I can encourage you, I can pray for you. Um, I can bless you, but at the end of the day, you know, it's down for you to walk with Christ. But, you know, part of my job is, as I say, as a shepherd, uh, is, to, is to lead by example and to encourage you along. Yeah. And and I think some, sometimes, Steve, um, our, our difficulties with authority is um, that sadly we, we've, we've perhaps we've become hurt. Maybe sometimes we've become hurt by authority figures in our lives, sometimes parents or teachers, uh, it, for example, who haven't always handled us with the love of God. And I think yeah, that can be a stumbling block sometimes. And I think, again, sometimes we need to go to God with that and ask God to heal us and to open our eyes again to see clearly um, mm. those that he has put in our lives, wants to put in our lives with that godly authority and that gentle, loving, shepherding hand. Mm. Um, you know, and, and of course, sometimes shepherding is with firmness, isn't it? You know, it says about David, who was the best king Israel ever had, that, you know, he shepherded Israel with skill and integrity. And, and, and I think that's, you know, that's, a, that's beautiful. Mm. He knew all there was to know about shepherding. He'd been a shepherd as a young man for years, hadn't he? Just looking after a bunch of stupid sheep. And, and he knew what it looked like to handle people. And there is a skillfulness, there's an integrity about it. So, you know, Paul says, pray for your leaders as well. Pray, pray for them that they will be able to, um, to be those shepherds that we need them to be. So again, it is a two-way thing, isn't it? It's a two-way street. It's not mm. just that I need the leaders to be helping me and looking after me and having authority over me, but that we can we bless our leaders as well. Mm -hmm. And and that's also part of the lovely thing about belonging. And the another thing I would say, Steve, is you know, a good leader, um, a loving leader wants to bring truth. We've talked about truth quite mm. a bit the last few weeks, but wants to bring truth um, to to the to the his people or her people, so that we we really are healthy and going on in God. And you know, when when we don't belong somewhere and we're just trying to take truth for ourselves, it, it's a bit like you know, I love buffets. 
Hong Kong. I used to live in Hong Kong, of course, and Hong Kong's very big on buffets. Mm. And, and I, you know, I used to, first of all, I was repulsed and then I used to laugh because, you know, what can happen at a buffet? Of course, people take far too much, don't they? And, you know, the, and, and people would pile their plates up like crazy and only eat half of it. And then some restaurant owners in Hong Kong got very smart and decided, you know, that you, if you left anything on your plate, you paid a forfeit for it. So people would just take gradually, which is much more sensible. But you've got such variety on these buffets, amazing stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I could take you to a wonderful restaurant where, you know, the seafood yeah. is, well, you wouldn't find any, any better in the world, fresh salmon, raw salmon and sushis and all, just all sorts of things. You, you couldn't ask for the wrong thing. But if I'm left to myself at a buffet, I will only pick certain things to eat, you know, and I might think, well, I want to pick all the fancy stuff. I want the sushi. I want the squid. I want the caviar. I want the lobster. You know what I mean? And and forget that there's also perhaps some rice and pasta and stuff like that and some salad that I might need to put with it for it to be healthy and balanced. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we've mentioned before, Steve, that bothers me a bit now is that sometimes because we're separated from our people quite a lot and, and we, we can be looking online, we can be looking to get fed from all sorts of different directions and places and we can be thinking, I just want to eat lobster, I just want to eat caviar, I just want to eat this. And so I'm listening to this person and that person and the other person. Mm. And I'm listening to what I feel I want to listen to and what, what I need. But in, in church, the building up that we're talking about, the growing up, the maturing, mm. means that a wise leader will be preaching the whole counsel of God yeah. and preaching truth from across the board. And so you'll be getting a good a good go at the buffet. <laughs> um, and that is a, a very important reason. You know, Paul talked to Timothy very much about the truth that you bring your people will be very important and it will help to grow them and it will help to protect them. And um, so that, that's, that's an important part of the belonging too. Yeah. I would say in closing, probably the key for me is as a leader is communication. People need to communicate with their leaders. Um, just a brief example, no names, no pack drill, but we had a lovely lad come in a few uh, months before we closed uh, lockdown, uh, hungry to go out onto the mission field. Um, but because we talked through the process, he suddenly realised there were some steps that he had to take. So instead of being frustrated mm. and saying to God, when... He started to see mm. some clear pathway as to how. So we started talking about getting out of debt and getting a job and sorting out paperwork and learning a language and finding skills that will be applicable to where he was going to serve the Lord. You know, and he's not there yet. Uh, he, and he'll probably be smiling when he listens to this because he knows who he is. But God's been so gracious. But that came through communication. Now, he could have sat in, in Sedgley for the next 10 years, very frustrated that, Nobody had recognised the fact that God had got a call upon his life to do this. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's a two-way street. I think sometimes, you know, we're pastors, we're not clairvoyant. You know, although God does give us wisdom <laughs> and words of knowledge sometimes. <laughs> now, if God's put something on your heart and you need discipling and training that, then you need to reach out to us. And that's part of what we're here to do. I'm here to make sure that you win and you are part of your God-given ministry. So speak yeah. up. It's my big thing. You know, don't sit there. Too many Christians sit there and say, well, I've, I've been in this church 10 years and nobody's recognised this gift on my life. Well, maybe because, one, you haven't demonstrated it in your serving, or two, you've not communicated mm -hmm. to a leader that says, I need some help to get to where I believe God is taking me to. And for me, that's been a big yeah. lesson during lockdown, that people actually more have reached out and said, actually, I think this is what God's doing in me. How do I get there? And I've been really blessed by that. Mm, that's great. That is, that's really great. Right. And that's that is so healthy. So healthy. Yeah. And well done the, if you've been yeah. doing that. <laughs> but that's the dialogue that needs to happen because between, mm. you know, you know, we're not we're not there to to whip the sheep and to force them to do anything. You know, God has placed us in the body to function. And if you're not functioning, 
to, the, to where you yeah. ought to be, or you're not functioning alongside the other body part that you need to be functioning next to, then that's mm -hmm. part of our leadership job is to put people together. Go, have you spoke to so-and-so? They've got the same heart. Not quite in the same way, but actually if you two pray together and seek God about that, then we connect, connect you to this little group. Yes. And all of a sudden we've got five, six, seven people working together with purpose, and then the church is blessed, yeah. you yeah. know. So mm -hmm. it's so simple. My yeah. work is so complicated, don't we, you know. <laughs> We do, yes. Yeah, mostly mostly anything to do with the gospel and the kingdom is pretty simple. <laughs> totally simple. And Jesus just wants us to take up our cross and follow him. So listen to his voice. His sheep hear his voice. We said that that was our first talk together. My sheep hear my voice. And yes. uh, we've not changed that. 32 yes. talks on. We're still saying listen to the voice of God. Communicate yes. with the pastors and leaders God's giving you. Find your place to serve. Grow and mature. And if, if, if God's put you in a church for a season, then he'll find you a way out and place in the mission field. I mean, there was a time when, we're probably going over our time now, Maggie, but there was a time when God put a call upon your life and you had to leave behind a local church that you've been part of for years. And it's it's a challenge all of its own. It, it is a challenge, yeah. But it was, I tell you what, it was great to have a nest to fly out of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know, know what I mean? Because there were people there that I could talk to who prayed for me and prayed for me for years after mm -hmm. I'd gone out. Some of them still do pray still do, and yeah, give yeah. to me after mm -hmm. years and years. Yeah. And and they were a, they were a help to me. And um, so in, yes, it, it was hard to lead, leave. But, um, you know, and then God, of course, provided because I went to an organization and the, that was established. Uh, which was also important. God gave me people in that place as well mm. to to encourage me on and for me to learn from, learn lots from, and people to love me and be accountable to. And yeah, so it's it's not. Um, we don't need to be loose cannons, do we? <laughs> we, we do not. We do Wondering not. Wondering about on our own. Be connected, no. and if you're messing around and, and maybe you've been away from the Lord for a while, come back. Uh, maybe during lockdown you decided that the yes. church you're not in is not for you then please go and find a thriving local body where leaders will listen and mm. you can become part and serve and be blessed by association so maggie would you just close in prayer for us as we go today that'd be fantastic yes. thank you yeah yeah father thank you you've heard everything we've talked about today and you know who was listening and so i pray that you just connect your word up to the to those who needed to hear Thank you that you're able to do that. And uh, Father, you know where we're at with all these things. We thank you for your church. We thank you it's your gift to us. We thank you for your bride. We thank you it's a wonderful body. We thank you that it's a beautiful building that you are building up. So will you show each one of us where you want us to be connected and help us to make that right move, have the courage and confidence to reach out and to trust that you'll guide us and you'll fit us where we where you want us to fit so that we can grow up in you and we can thrive and we can play our part and see you at work in our lives and through us and through other people thank you father we pray in jesus name amen amen thank you once again maggie for a great uh, chat uh, lots to think about there i did say to you didn't i on text earlier before we came on here plenty to chew over and i think we've chewed over a fair bit of it there's probably a lot more we can get out of that so maybe revisit that under the week but god bless you have a great week and we'll speak to you soon take care